everyone, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Um, today we're going to get right into the weekly for Capricorn. I do apologize for the late upload. I did leave a message on my community page. I was having work done on my building and it was too noisy to get the readings done this weekend. So, but nevertheless, um, before we get into your reading, Capricorn, just letting you all know that I'm giving away this beautiful spirit animal oracle deck from Colette Baron Reed. Gorgeous deck. Uh, if you want to see the unboxing video for that, that is linked in the description along with your other videos. And all you have to do to be in the running for that is to leave me a comment letting me know that you're interested and um, to go ahead and be subscribed to my channel. Now, Capricorn, we're going to get right into your spread and pull out your romance angel messages. Then we will pull out your animal spirits. And then we'll get right into your traditional spread, okay? All right, Capricorns. My Venus is in Capricorn. So I resonate with a little bit of Capricorn energy. And uh, I do hope you're having a good December so far. Let's get right into it. All right, straight out we have attraction. Very nice. We have let go of control issues all right now. And we have reconciliation. Wow. All right. Um, these are quite nice messages, right? They fit together. They work well together. So let's go ahead before. I mean, they're quite, quite self-explanatory. There's no point in me trying to intuit the message from this. Attraction, let go of control issues and reconciliation. We're going to know more as we get into your cards. Let's pull out your animal spirits. Now, animal spirits can represent individuals or characteristics of people, personalities of people that you may be dealing with, right, significantly. They can indicate energies that are becoming available to you right now to help you through a particular scenario or situation. Or they can indicate stages that we are entering into or about to exit out of in our lives, right? So let's just see what we have, Capricorn. And of course, just take what applies to you. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. We know that not all readings can be for all Capricorns, right? All right, here we go. We have the tarantula. Wow, talks about being at a crossroads in life. Fire energy. Air energy with the butterfly, of course, synonymous with transformation, change, beautiful, metamorphosis even. And then we have the wolf. Earth energy, a regular player on my readings, all right? So let's get right into your animal spirits and then we can go into your spread. The tarantula, well, tarantula. <clears throat> One of the secrets to uh, understanding animal spirit cards or oracle cards, uh, animal oracle cards, is to know the animals, right? To understand how they behave in the wild. Tarantulas are one of these types of creatures that when you see them in the wild, oftentimes they are extremely still, right? They may be on a branch or in the, you know, in the thicket, in the grass, what have you. Very, very still. Oftentimes they're not moving at all and they can see, sometimes you think that they're dead even, right? Um, the tarantula, this is what it kind of stands for, this animal spirit, kind of standing still, but standing still at a crossroads, right? This is a time in our lives for some of you Capricorns where you are having to make a huge decision. Which way to go? Which way shall your life go? Which, which road shall you take? You are absolutely at a crossroads and tarantula energy comes in because the tarantula will not take one step until it is absolutely sure of the next step. This is a time for extreme focus, paying attention, uh, sending your focus inward as well as paying attention to your surroundings so that the next move you make, you make with surety and from a position of authority and strength in your life because it is a very important decision that you are about to make uh, for your future. Now the butterfly works very well in tandem with the tarantula because butterfly energy is of course synonymous with self-transformation, metamorphosis, right? Not even, not even just transformation, but metamorphizing into something completely different. You know, when we look at a caterpillar changing into a butterfly, I mean, we have two completely different creatures, right? Yet they, they have the makings within them of each, 
All right, so the butterfly talks about big changes in your life. Now, these changes are going to be mental changes, all right? They can be physical changes, but oftentimes this self-transformation is a change in your mindset, your outlook, right? Because, of course, the butterfly is an air elemental creature, and air is always associated with communication, the mind, and the ego. This can also be a metamorphosizing, excuse me, metamorphosizing of your ego as well, of your ego sort of changing and leveling up. And what we want to see with the ego as it matures is that it reduces. We want the ego to diminish and the spirit to increase. And this is one of those types of transformations that can happen. The other thing the butterfly is synonymous with is calling on friends, right? It's at times when we are going through these type of changes, although we all say that they're changes for the better and, you know, we want these type of changes. They are not without pain. They are not without difficulty. It still uh, can hurt. Right? It can still hurt. It can still be difficult to change. And you will maybe, you will and should really call on any friends that you have in your life that you can trust um, to be around you during a period like this, right? So that you can have uh, as much support as possible as you're going through these very difficult changes and very important changes. Now, the wolf. I love the wolf. The wolf is earth energy. The wolf is associated with the great activist, right? The social activist. Why the wolf is only concerned with the protection of the pack, right? The wolf is this type of animal spirit that talks about, you know, protecting the vulnerable in our society, right? Protecting those that no one else is willing to protect. The, the, the small in number uh, compared to the great in number. Uh, the wolf is associated with activism, humanitarianism. Uh, this could be somebody who works in a community for civil rights or for eradication of homelessness or hunger, right? It's a very altruistic person, very idealistic person. The one thing the wolf, though, can happen uh, with this energy, sometimes they can be overly critical of those that they lead in the sense of forcing them to follow their ideology or follow in their footsteps, right? To be a little bit overly sort of, you must be like me attitude, right? So just take care with that. But for the most part, the wolf is very, very strong. Strong feminine energy, by the way. It's a feminine leadership energy position. Uh, and also a teacher position, right? Certainly a teacher and definitely a parental figure in a lot of ways, uh, for those who don't have their own parents necessarily, someone who resonates with this energy oftentimes will be like the parental figure in, in their friends' lives, right? You know, the, the, mother, the mother or father that, you know, the friend never had, right? That sort of scenario. Very strong, very kind, very uh, individual, very idealistic. All right. Let's get right into it, guys. We're going to pull out anywhere from four to six three-card spreads. And these spreads are going to look at what your week may or may not entail. And again, just take what applies to you and disregard the rest, all right? We know even with these four different sort of forecasts, none of them may resonate with you. And that's absolutely okay, Capricorn. All right. All right, straight out we have Page of Wands, Four of Pentacles, and the Ace of Wands. Wow. All right, Page of Wands talks about overcoming fear. All right. With all the pages, pages are the first rung in the court card of that suit. And with all the pages, we see an inherent essence of overcoming fear in that area. Here we have overcoming fear and following your ambition and following your creative voice uh, uh, the page of wands is very idealistic. I would say page of wands is very much resonating with wolf energy in a lot of ways, right? Um, idealistic in a sense of you have a vision for your life. You have an ambition, you have something that you feel passionate about, and you are no longer afraid to follow that regardless of how that may make you look to the outside world. And so you're coming into this week with this really strong, motivated sort of idealistic vibe energy. Uh, and you're met with a four of pentacles. So for some of you, you may be uh, beginning to start a particular project, right? A particular 
project or endeavor in an area that you feel passionate about, but you're met with a worry about money. Four is the number for stability, and four of pentacles oftentimes is interpreted as the miser or someone who's very greedy, but where does that come from, you know? Uh, those type of uh, emotions, baser emotions, um, they come from fear. And four of pentacles is a fear that your finances may be threatened or that your finance, so that your financial stability uh, may be in jeopardy in some way. And it could very well be uh, Capricorn that your desire. Interesting, you have a crossroads here. All right, and I know that you Capricorns are about your coin. You're very hard workers in that way, much like the Taurus. I'm a Taurus rising myself, so, you know, I get that. But I feel like some of you Capricorns are kind of shifting, right? You had a crossroads in your life with this tarantula energy. Maybe some of this wolf energy is coming in, and you're shifting your focus perhaps from career and business towards a more altru altruistic or a idealistic path, perhaps a more creative path. And in so doing, you worry about your money, right? You worry about uh, your stability. You know, if I turn from business or career or what I know makes me money to something that I know makes me happy, this is a crossroads, right? This is a major decision, right? But you come out of the week with an Ace of Wands. I'm going to say Ace of Wands talks about absolute sort of ambition to follow this through. By the end of the week, I think you double down and you make the decision to follow your creative heart, regardless of the fear of financial sort of, you know, turmoil or instability that you might experience. Ace of Wands is very sort of, uh, go for it, right? This is a new opportunity. Not only have you overcome your fear in expressing yourself creatively, but by the end of the week, you have a very real opportunity to take this desire in a certain direction. It's not like it's open-ended or you have no idea what you're going to do next. You just want to be creative. You absolutely know, uh, you, you absolutely by the end of the week have an avenue to focus this creative energy into, um, and I think for some of you, absolutely take it. And it is a big change in your life. It is, it is and in a lot of ways, you resonate with a lot, all three of these because you're at a crossroads and you're also transforming mentally in a sense that you are changing your outlook on what you feel passionate about and what you have decided to follow through on, right? And, and whenever that happens, Capricorn, we always worry about money a little bit, especially someone like you who is a type of uh, sign or energy that it, that that where money and financial stability career stability you know is is very much tied to your own sense of self and that's fine you know because you are an earth sign you know so it's like you know you need to you need to see the results of your hard work right uh around you you know the fruits of your labor and i think all signs could do with a little bit of that energy right so in any case, some of you definitely have a big decision to make this week. King of Pentacles, the star, and the Ace of Swords, another Ace. Big beginnings, guys, this week. We've got two Aces come through already. So huge beginnings for Capricorn this week. You come into the week with King of Pentacles. And I'm going to say that, yeah, for some of you, you have risen to a particular status level in your career or your business. You are resonating with King of Pentacles energy. This is very Taurian energy anyway, so that's your sister sign. But the King of Pentacles is someone who has a track record for manifesting his dreams in the material world. He has a track record for a good business sense or good sort of career sense, right? Um, he's gotten to that level in his life where others respect him for his wisdom in those areas. Oftentimes the King of Pentacles can be a mentor, right? To someone else, or they can be a benefactor, an investor, someone who helps to support another person's dream for their career or business, um, options. And so you're sitting kind of pretty in this way, right? You're doing very well. You're established. You come into this week, you meet star energy. And again, it's another, seems to be another crossroads for you. Some of you Capricorns, you've established yourself in your career, but this week suddenly you have a wish for something extremely creative and beautiful, something different for your life to come in. This feels very much like a Capricorn who's probably gone down the career path as a sense of duty perhaps or perhaps that's what you felt you were supposed to do but you're at a point in your life again with this tarantula 
and butterfly energy, uh, you're at a point in your life where you are sort of uh, reevaluating your your life's your wish for your life. You know, star energy talks about the wish, the desire, and the wish and the ambition we have for our life's purpose, right? And constantly feeding that with our emotions and our, our feelings and our desires and our action, right? Uh, feeding the path or feeding, you know, every, you know, in a way living our lives so that, you know, the decisions that we make and the way that we carry ourselves are all towards achieving that, that main ambition or that main wish that we have for the type of life that we want to lead. And so in a lot of ways, uh, uh, you're coming into this star energy because something is going on in your life, Capricorn, for a lot of you where you're starting to reevaluate that wish. Perhaps it's going down a different path with this tarantula energy. And again, perhaps it's going down more of a creative path or even a spiritual path, whatever the case may be. Um, it could also be a continuation of your business and career path too, right? But whatever the case may be, this, this star energy, this desire you have for yourself, you're not at it yet, right? You're, own, you know, you're moving towards it, but you may not just be there quite yet, having uh, achieved exactly the, uh, the pinnacle of your desire just yet. And you round the week off with an ace of swords. So in any case, what happens is you, you round the week off with a lot of clarity and thought, uh, clarity in your thought or in your solution, uh, process, right. Uh, for deciding the next step on this path. Okay. You know, ace of swords comes in, in the sense that it's like ace of swords is like the light bulb comes on, you know, on, you know, on the marble head, right. It's the solution. It's the clear headedness. It's the single mindedness. Um, oftentimes it's a solution that comes in that it's a vindicator as well. It vindicates you in a way that, you know, uh, you may have felt for some time, like, even though I don't know what to do next, I know I'll find the right answer. And so once this answer or this clarity comes in, it's like you feel vindicated because you knew it would at some point come in. And I'm going to say, yeah, for a lot of you, it could be, you know, you're coming into this week. And something has occurred or something is occurring in your life that is making you think more about your ultimate desire for your life, whether it be to continue in this field or to change lanes into a different field or area. But whatever the case may be, this is what you're really focused on this week. And sure enough, by the end of the week, your, your clarity comes in and you know exactly what steps you need to take next uh, on, on the road to achieving this ultimate wish. Nine of Swords, Seven of Pentacles, and the Moon. All right, so Nine of Swords talks about having sleepless nights. Nine of Swords is very like sort of anxious energy, worrying, regretting. Sometimes it can be a little bit of guilt that we have for how we handled ourselves in a particular situation. It's the misery that we put on ourselves, right? It's remorse. It's a little bit of remorse, right? But oftentimes it's just kind of like putting ourselves through the paces, right? Um, because, you know, something didn't work out the way, you know, we wanted it to work out. Or perhaps, you know, th feeling like our future is being impacted by some of the mistakes we made in the past and the regret we have for them. This feeling of, you know, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have done that back then because now I feel like I'm being paid back now or will it happen again now? It's anxiety, you know, it's anxiety and, it, and oftentimes anxiety comes up and there's no real sort of basis for it. There's no factual proof that you've done something wrong or something you should feel guilty about. It's just there. And so some of you this week are feeling very anxious about a particular area in your life, very worried. And I could say it definitely has something to do with your career because you met with the seven of pentacles this week, which is a reevaluation. I think for some of you, something is going on in your career, perhaps let go of control issues in the sense that something is going on or perhaps something is not moving as quickly as you wanted it to move. And so this week, you're really reevaluating um, the fruit of your labor. You're, you're really reevaluating you know, what you've achieved so far to say, well, hang on a second. Is this really what I desire? You know, I'm up every night worried. It could be that this, these nine of swords could be stresses and pressures that you're undergoing at work, right? As well, right? It could be, you know, you're being kept up at night about pressures at work that, you know, aren't fair, 
but they're there, right? And um, this is another sort of way of torturing ourselves. Uh, I don't want to say for no reason, but over things that really shouldn't matter so much, right? And it could be this pressure and stress from work. And again, it leads to the same same situation, which this week you're doing a lot of reevaluating. And certainly if what you're feeling is pressure from your job or your career, you're, re you're doing a lot of reevaluating on, is it worth it? Why am I up all night? Why am I stressed out all the time? Why am I thinking? Why am I worried? You know, is this worth it? You can see the figure in the, in the card literally looking, you know, leaning on his hoe, his garden hoe, and literally looking over his garden and saying, hmm, is this what I wanted? Is this worth it? You know, after all this work that I've put in, and is this really what I want for my life? By the end of the week, you 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 fall right full on into moon mode, which is a definitely a testing phase. I'm going to say in your life, but certainly a feeling of not being sure. Okay, by the end of the week, I'm going to say after you've reevaluated everything, it's not that you get any kind of definite answer. You're really still very unsure. Um, and I want to say to a certain degree, you're unsure because, you know, you don't have all the information. You're not, you know, it could, of course, you don't know exactly what tomorrow brings, right? Um, but you do know what's causing you this anxiety, okay? Um, and so in a lot of ways, you do have to perhaps, you know, the moon is always the testing phase, you know? So even though it could be like you may be saying, an example could be you're saying to yourself like, all right, I'm really stressed out at work. My boss is really getting on my case, right? But I, I have to stick this job through because what I wanted was to be at a certain position. In order to get to that position, I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to deal with this department and this boss, right? Or else I'll never get to this position that I wanted, right? But yet and still the pressure is very, very heavy. Um, it could be then that this week you begin to say, well, hang on a second. Is the pressure worth this position? Is it worth everything I'm doing? And will I even get there? And once I get there, is it really what I still want? I know it's what I wanted maybe a few years ago, but now that I've been in this career for a while, I'm not even sure if this position that I've been working so hard for is what I really want. And so then comes in the moon, the moon comes in to say, well, um, you have to make a, de a decision for yourself. Which way will you go? You know, and you're not sure, right? You're not sure. It's like you're completely caught up in your feelings in a sense that, you know, you're like saying to yourself, okay, yeah, well, I'm not sure if I want it anymore. I'm not sure if I can handle the stress. And even if I get there, will it be, uh, will it bring all the happiness that I thought it would bring? And you don't know either or because you have to wait until you get there to figure it out. And that's the energy of the moon. That's why it's a test. Right, because you don't know the outcome. You know, you may work towards a particular goal, but there's no guarantee that achieving that goal will make you happy. You know, and so this is the this is what you're feeling by the end of the week. And I'm gonna say for a lot of you, you're gonna really have to continue to search your heart and maybe let go of some control issues, right? And really search your heart about uh, you know, the here and now. You know, continuing to sort of work towards something where the goal is always in the future, but in the meantime, you're always unhappy or you're always stressed out or you're always pressurized, you know, feeling the pressure. Um, you know, at some that's the decision to make, and I think that's the testing that the moon is putting you through. You know, because you can never know the outcome, but you can know how you feel now. And you have to decide for yourself, for some of you, if this anxiety that you're feeling now, is it truly worth continuing to work towards this objective? This is going to be the last spread. Six of swords, five of swords, and a two of wands. All right, Capricorn, some of you come into this week with a six of swords. The six, of course, is the number for harmony, journeying towards harmony. And with Six of Swords, you have it's funny, you have a Six of Swords and then a Five of Swords. Six of Swords is an intentional decision to leave this kind of energy behind, to leave Five of Swords energy behind, uh, to, to, to engage with people who are more like-minded like yourself, to engage with individuals where it is much more harmonious, where you're not constantly fighting or having to look at who's stabbing you in the back, right? Uh, you want, it's not that you, you mind disagreeing or debating or even arguing with people, but it, it is the sort of the, um, <clears throat> it's sort of the toxicity of the five of swords that we're leaving behind. You've come and you've come and made that decision. Some of you Capricorn and this week though, you're still met with a five of swords in a few areas. So although you've made this decision, 
right? This week, I think what happens is that you, you, you double down on your decision and by the end of the week, you make your actual first steps to move away because this is the decision, this is the mindset you enter the week with, but you're still met with this power struggle here because five is power struggle. Five is the number for power struggle. And five of swords, we have a power struggle with someone who's willing to cheat, willing to gossip, willing to lie, willing to employ all kinds of underhanded tactics. This person is not someone who plays by the same rules as you. And so five of swords is the card for defeat, right? We call it, it's the card for defeat, but only in the sense that uh, a defeat because you allow somebody else to have a hollow victory. This is the card where we allow ourselves to sort of throw our hands up and say, you know what, you win. Because the only way that you can engage somebody with this kind of energy is to lower yourself to their energy. You know, you can't beat somebody in an argument or a fight or, or a battle, as it were, if they are resorting to underhanded tactics. The only way that you can sort of match match with them is to resort to underhanded tactics your, yourself. And do you want to do that? And so this, is, this Five of Swords is the card for defeat, but it's also the card for taking the high road, right? It's not really a defeat, you know. It's a decision to walk away with in tranquility and harmony and with some stability rather than continuing to engage in this sort of toxic dynamic that only brings you closer down, well, closer and further down to where this person is at. Right. So you're met with this sort of struggle this week in some area of your life and you decide to finally say, yeah, you win, you know, because in the back of your mind, you've already made the decision to move on. And by the end of the week, you have a two of wands, which is Mars and Aries energy. Two of wands is Mars and Aries. So we're talking about by the end of the week, you are making definite steps to get on with your life. Some of you will actually be moving away from this environment or this social circle or work circle, whatever, wherever this sort of power struggle is, you are actually taking steps by the end of the week to physically move away or to change, you know, your environment so that you're not around this anymore, but you absolutely have your eyes fixed on the horizon. And, you know, Mars is the planet of action. And in Aries, we're talking about making significant steps towards your future. And for some of you, this will be a big crossroads decision. Because it could very well be that this is a decision that you're making for yourself to no longer engage in the type of relationships or dynamics that perhaps for quite some time you've been engaging in with these, with these types of individuals. So this is a real crossroads for some of you. And for some of you, leaving may mean not necessarily coming back if this is a family issue or a cultural issue. All right, guys. This is your reading. It ran over a little bit, but it was a good reading. Very powerful. The cards worked all very well together. I'm going to say for almost all four of these forecasts, there was a little bit of tarantula, butterfly, and wolf energy at play. Very, very healthy week for you, Capricorn. Very, very transformative and certainly a week of decisions, major decisions, life decisions for a lot of you. All right. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. If you're subscribed and you're interested in this deck, please make sure to leave me a comment and just let me know you're interested. Um, check out your other videos that are linked below. But for right now, my lovely Capricorns, have a wonderful third week in December, and I shall see you next Saturday. Bye-bye now.